Hey friends, how's it going? If you remember my last video a few months ago back in May, you might remember there was a whole lot of activity going on in the dart frog tank. I ended up catching a lot of really cool breeding behavior, but the best part was yet to come. The following day, I decided I'd flip a few leaves over around where most of the action was taking place and I came across the first clutch of eggs. Unfortunately, not all of them were fertile and I also think I may have damaged a few by taking them off the leaves, which is a lesson learned. Over the next week or so, they did up laying a few more clutches, but each clutch ended up having fewer eggs in it each time. By the time they were done, I ended up with 10 eggs, which I watched develop over the next few weeks into 10 healthy tadpoles. Prior to this point, everything is pretty much watch and wait. From here on out though, there are a few things you need to do to ensure that your tadpole makes it to a froglet. The first thing you'll need is a container to house the tadpole in until it reaches that stage. For these tadpoles, I'll be using 16 ounce deli cups. Now normally people would make what's referred to as tadpole tea by boiling these Indian almond leaves in uh, some water and letting the tannins leach out. But since I was making these cups up so early, I thought I would just throw the leaves in there, add some water and let the tannins leach out on their own. Uh, last but not least, you're gonna wanna add a clump of java moss to your cup. Now the reason behind the tannins and the java moss is that the tannins contain antifungal and antibacterial properties and the java moss is there to consume any excess nutrients created by the tadpole waste. And here I have all my cups done and after a few days of sitting out, we have tadpole tea. And here you can see the difference between a tadpole that's ready to go in the water and one that is not ready yet. Now the significance of the tadpole that has straightened out is that it is done consuming its yolk and it's ready to start swimming. As you can see in this picture and you may have noticed in some other ones, the veins going out from the tadpole are going into the yolk and they're absorbing the nutrients. Now, tadpoles from dart frogs are not like other frogs, and if the egg is completely submerged in water, they will drown. Now, this is not my finest moment. As you can see, I'm trying to transfer the tadpole that's ready to go into the water, but the water tension will not release on the edge of the petri dish, so it's a little rough here. But once I do get him into the water, then he still has a bit of the membrane on him, which I did not see while he was in the petri dish. At this point I am struggling a bit on whether or not I should pull him out, but I thought since he was in there I'd give him a few nudges, being careful not to try to pull the membrane off of him, that's definitely not something you want to do. But here you see he just sheds it and he's good. The best part about getting your tadpole in the water is the really critical stages of the life cycle are pretty much over. From here on out it's pretty much keep the water clean and keep them fed. So in this part, I'm going to show you what I do for the water. To store my water for the top offs and water changes, I just use a lemonade jug with a spout on it. Now, since I use RO water, I do use replenish to put the minerals back in the water. And a much cheaper option than almond leaves is to use instant Amazon black water solution. Now I have seen some videos of people using straight RO water, which I would caution against. The reason you don't want to use 100% RO water is you can induce one of the conditions of osmotic shock, which is hypotonic shock. Hypotonic shock occurs when there is little to no, in this case, mineral or salt content outside the cell, which causes water to rush into the cell, damaging it or possibly bursting it. On to a happier note. Uh, this is what I do for my weekly water changes. The cup on the left has clean water in it and the cup on the right is for the wastewater that I'm going to extract from the cups. So the first thing I actually like to do with the weekly water change is pull out the java moss. Uh, it does collect quite a bit of gunk over the week so I'd like to put it in a nice deep cup so the stuff that does come off of it can sink to the bottom. And here I'll just take it and swirl it around and just 
kind of agitated a bit. You can already see stuff coming off of the moss. It doesn't look too bad with just this one, but uh, I'll show you what happens to the cup after I do 10. Now, once I'm done rinsing it out, I'll just set it to the side and now I can get into the cup and start pulling out all the nasty chunky stuff. And just one shot of the cup after one Java Moss clump rinsing. Cleaning all the waste and debris is pretty simple. I use a pipette, you can use that, or a turkey baster works as well. What I do like to do is use this first before I dump out the water to do a 50% water change. It just makes it easier to control how much water I'm actually taking out of the cup. Now once I'm done cleaning, obviously I just put the Java Moss back in. And you can actually see how much it's grown. That's probably three times the amount I put in there originally. And go over to my water container and turn the spout on and fill the cup back up. And as promised, here is the cup after rinsing out 10 clumps of Java Moss, which in my opinion is well worth the time and effort. Now, outside of water changes, obviously the next most important thing is what to feed your tadpole. To feed my tadpoles, I went with the Extreme Aquatic Foods scrapers that I use in my Malawi tank. I did try another tadpole specific food, but they seem to prefer this over that. So I'm just gonna stick with this. It's much cheaper too, especially for the quantity you get. Now this part's pretty straightforward. I just like to take a tablet out and then cut it up into uh, little pieces to put in the cups. So you might notice I am cutting them kind of small and the reason for that mainly is because they do expand and another reason is I like to feed mine daily rather than putting a big chunk in there. I tried to put larger pieces in there like every other day but uh, what eventually happened is that they didn't finish it and it just started to mold inside the cup. Now depending on your frog species some morph a little quicker than others. Mine were a little slow. I think it had a lot to do with the temperature in my basement. But the first thing you're going to notice is the hind legs come out. They do look really odd at first, but they do start to get bigger and thicken up. And then what you'll see next are two bumps on the sides. And those are the front legs forming underneath the skin. Shortly after that, you're going to see the pigment start to come in and some patterns and unfortunately I didn't have any pictures of the front legs popping out but here you can see this tadpole is about ready to come out. And during this stage they're going to stop eating and they will start absorbing their tails and you'll also notice that they start surfacing quite a bit more to take gulps of air. Now to house your froglets you have a couple options here. Uh, I actually use two. This first container here is just set up for them to morph out of their cups into. And another container I have has actually been seeded for quite a long time, six, eight months or so, that has uh, dwarf white isopods and some springtails in it. Now you don't have to use two. You can use the same one for both, but I just prefer having them in a smaller container. That way I know that they're gonna get to the food. Unfortunately, as luck would have it, I had to leave town for a week and I knew this frog was about to morph so I just stuck his cup in the container with the springtails and isopods. Uh, so just for reference, this is him on September 2nd and seven days later you can see his tail is just almost gone. So luckily I had my nephew feeding my other frogs and he showed up in the middle of the week and snapped this picture and that's only two days later after the previous picture. So once they start absorbing that tail it go, really goes quick. And then by the time I came back I had my first froglet. So unfortunately unlike feeding tadpoles you're really limited on what you can feed the froglets. Uh, for small thumbnail type frogs like Ufagas and Ranatamoyas, you're pretty much limited to springtails and dwarf isopods in the beginning. Uh, larger species like my Lukes and the Phyllobates, you're going to have the option of feeding the uh, Melanogasters much earlier. Now, luckily, once I have all 10 froglets in that one container, I have an endless supply of dwarf white isopods 
Uh, as I said, the uh, tub was already seeded with springtails. Not that they're much of a meal for a froglet of this size, but uh, I have noticed that my first froglet is already eating the melanogasters, so that's a good start. Now here I just threw in a little clip of how easy it is to feed the uh, froglet with this container rather than trying to pry a lid off and shaking it up and freaking them all out. So just a quick recap here of those of you who might be interested in it. Uh, they're not really in any order, but definitely for your tadpoles you want a high quality food. I like the spirulina based foods. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to spirulina itself. Now when you do feed the tadpoles, try not to overfeed them. I prefer the uh, small portions daily and still removing anything that is uneaten to keep the water quality up. Now along the same lines is just try to keep the water clean. Do some spot cleaning, just top the water off with whatever you remove. Now one thing I did forget to mention was the water temps, which is pretty much the same as what the adult frogs like to be kept in. Unfortunately, besides death, there is the added risk of some developmental issues if the uh, water temps for tadpoles are kept in the high 70s. Now this one here is pretty simple, just be prepared. It never hurts to have things set up early. And last but not least, just do your research. Not all tadpoles need to be cared for the same way, and some of them actually you don't need to take care of at all. Well, that's a wrap on this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope some of you maybe learned a little something, and uh, just a little quick shot here of the 450 gallon vivarium that the parents are in, that these guys will be joining them in hopefully a couple months. Oh, and uh, speaking of the parents, uh, I hear them going out again.